Hey everybody, this is Ms. Beeman. Uh, today I want to talk to you about how to use our online databases. So this video is going to be all about um, walking you through how to use one of our databases um, and then making sure that you can take that knowledge and apply it to our many other databases. So to start you out, um, we are here on the Liberty High School homepage. Obviously, if you're a student at Freedom or at Heritage, you would want to go to your own school's homepage. Um, but from here, the path to get to the library website and the databases are exactly the same. Um, so once you're on your school's homepage, you're going to go to the Academics drop-down menu um, and then go here where it says Library. And that'll take you to our Library Welcome page. From here, I just want to point out real quickly that if you scroll down a little bit, uh, we have a chat function right here on the welcome page where you can chat with me anytime during school hours from eight in the morning till three in the afternoon. So if you are trying to use a database and you have a question, this is a great place to go to ask if it's during the school day. If it's not during the school day, um, you can always email me. And if you scroll down to the bottom of our welcome page, you'll see my name and email address there. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can with an answer. Okay. All right. So a couple other things I want to point out over here on the right side of the page, you can see you can navigate to all of the different pages on our library site. Um, and we're going to visit a few of these today. But the first one I want to point out to you, um, if you are watching this video, you've probably already seen, but this is how you get to it. It's the research help page. Okay, our research help page is the page that has all of our tutorial videos on it. So obviously it has this video. It also has another video explaining to you what a database actually is. Okay, so we've got two different database videos, one that tells you what a database is and why you should use a database instead of Google. Um, and then this video that actually shows you how to do it. We also have tutorials for our online uh, catalog to look up books and um, how to check out ebooks. So all those tutorials can be found here on the research help page. Okay. All right, next we're going to move to the general resources page, which again over here on the right side of the screen is the third page down. Um, so I'm going to click there. Okay. We've got two different kinds of databases. Um, some of our databases are general resource databases. And what that means is they have articles and information on all different topics, just like Google does. Um, you can look up um, anything from a health related topic for a health class to history, to economics, to psychology, um, anything that you want. Um, and these databases will probably have some kind of information on them. Okay. We also have subject specific databases where um, the database has information just on one specific subject like history or psychology. Okay. We'll get to those in a minute, but the main database that I want to show you today is eLibrary. Okay. That's the one that we're going to use for our first demonstration. I mean, it's the one that you would probably use most frequently. It's our most comprehensive database, has a huge amount of information in it, um, and has information on all different topics. Okay. Uh, there's a link to our um, eLibrary database on almost every web page on the library's website, um, but one of the ways you can get to it is from this general resources page. Okay, so if we scroll down just a little bit, you'll see it's the first link on this page. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Now, you'll see that if you are um, not on campus, it's going to ask you for a login and a password or a username and a password. It wants you to prove that you are a student at one of our schools because we actually pay for you guys to have access to these databases. Okay. So the username and password it's looking for um, is not your email address or your student ID number and your uh, birth date, which is what you usually use to log into things. For this, we all share the same username and password. Everybody in the district uses the same one, okay? So you can see, I have it saved here on my computer. My username is LUHSD library. That's the one we all share. And then the password, um, unfortunately, I can't give to you on the video because I have to uh, keep it password protected. I can't put it out on the public internet. Your teacher will have that password um, or if for some reason your teacher doesn't or you can't get in touch with your teacher, you can always contact me and I'll be happy to give you the login information for our databases. Okay, um, you can also try logging in with Clever and um, you should be able to do that as well. 
Okay, so I'm going to click on the login and it should log us right in. And from here, you'll see that a database looks and works pretty much like Google does. Okay, so we've got a search box up here at the top where we could type in a topic if we have one. Okay, if we don't have a topic yet, like if our teacher just told us we have to do a current event or, you know, we can pick our own topic, you can see the eLibrary actually has all kinds of ideas for topics right here. So they have things that are in the news right now, like trending topics, things that people are actually looking up. So we could scroll through those and see what other people have been looking for. Okay. Um, and they have editor's picks here. These are the things that the people at eLibrary recommend. And then if we scroll down even a little bit further, um, they give you topic recommendations based on subject areas. Okay, so like if you are in um, a history class and your teacher tells you that you need to pick a topic, um, you could click on history here and they'll give you all kinds of topic ideas. Okay, so keep this in mind if you have to choose a topic and you're having a hard time coming up with an idea. Okay. All right, most of you, however, are probably already going to have a topic when you come here and you're going to know what you're looking for. So you're probably going to use the search box here to type in your topic. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and type in immigration, since that's a hot topic in the news, um, and click on enter. And it's going to give me back a whole list of results, just like Google does. Okay. So, like I said, we have a whole other video talking about the differences between Google and eLibrary, but you can actually see some of the differences right here on this page. Over on the left side of the page where it says source type, it breaks down for you exactly how many newspaper articles we found, how many magazine articles, etc. Okay, and so that's what eLibrary focuses on, newspapers, magazines, scholarly journals. If we scroll down a little bit further, we can also limit our search a little bit. Um, one of the things that you might be interested in is toward the bottom on the, the left side of the page where it says limit by publication date. Okay. We all know that with some topics, we really want recent information. Okay. Like with my topic, immigration, um, I'm really gonna probably want mostly information that has been published within the last few years, especially since President Trump has been elected, since immigration has been a topic in the news frequently during his administration. Okay, so I can, if I want to, limit to the last 30 days <clears throat> so that I will only have articles published in the last 30 days within the last 12 months, or I can put in dates for myself. So for example, if I wanted to put in the last four years, I could do that. I could just type my dates in right here and it would limit my results so that I get the most recent articles or the articles within the time frame that I want. Okay. All right, so if we look back over at the list, you'll see that we have like a big topic up here in gray. Okay, um, and this is something that eLibrary specifically does where they have like um, special topics, big topics, popular topics, where if we click on this, it's going to give us a collection of resources on this topic. Okay, so we could click there, but we can also look down here a little bit below that and see that it's giving us a bunch of individual articles as well. Okay, so you can look through all of those. Um, also, please note right here, just like Google, um, underneath our sort of special topic page here, um, there is a collection of images. And if you look over on the left side of the screen under source type, you'll see that images is one of the source types. So just like with Google, you can do an image search on eLibrary. So if you're looking for pictures, um, in addition to your facts and figures, um, you can get that on eLibrary too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on the special topic, immigration, okay? And it's gonna take us to this collection of resources on this topic. And you can see up here at the top, it gives you the contents. It gives you the history of the topic throughout history. It gives you a gallery of images. It tells you about the controversy and then gives you a couple of different, uh, more specific topics underneath immigration. In this case, illegal immigration and immigration economics, okay? So this page provides kind of like a starting place that gives you some general information on the topic, which is awesome if it's a topic that you don't know a lot about. This is where you can go to get some basic information. Okay. 
And then if you scroll down, it sees it gives you the throughout history. This is immigration history here. Um, and there's your gallery of images, okay? Here are your controversial articles. Here are your, your articles in your graphs and pictures on illegal immigration. Okay, so these are all the things that we saw up there at the top of the page. Okay. Um, if we see something here that we really want to look more closely at, for example, if your specific topic has to do um, with Chinese immigration, okay, we could go ahead and click on one of these articles. That one didn't work. I've never seen that happen before, but we're going to go ahead and click on another one. So we, we picked this one on immigration. Okay. Um, and it's going to give you the full article right here. Okay. This one's actually part of a book and you can tell that by right up here underneath the title, it says books and that if it was a magazine, it would say magazine. If it were a um, scholarly journal, it would say scholarly journal. Okay, so it's giving you an actual excerpt of a book. It's not the whole book necessarily, um, but it's an excerpt from a book. Okay, so you can go ahead and read through here and get some, um, in, in, some background on immigration, immigration history. Okay. Also note this gray button right here where it says listen. That means you can click on this and the database will read the article to you. Okay, so um, that means that if you learn better by listening to something being read while you're reading along, you can do that. Also over here, um, further to the right in this blue green colored box, you've got some great tools here to help you out. Um, if you find an article that you really like, you can download it and save it to Google Drive or to OneDrive so that you have that article saved and you don't have to keep going back to the database to find it. Um, also, of course, if you're working in a group, you could set up a folder in your Google Drive, save it with other, share it with other members of your group, and that way you would all have access to um, those articles and that information. You can also print it or email it to yourself. Um, but the link here, the tool that is probably most useful to you is the second one here that says cite. If you click on that, it's going to give you the citation information for this article. Okay, so that's for your works cited page. All you have to do is hit the green copy button right here and you can copy and paste it right into your works cited page or if you're doing a presentation, your works cited slide. Okay, if you're using EasyBib, you can export it to EasyBib super easy right here. Just click on the little icon. Okay, but like I said, you can also copy and paste. So that saves you from having to figure out how to cite the information. You can also see that we've got some related documents here. Okay, so if you're looking at the history of immigration and you want it going all the way back to colonial times um, or some other more specific topics, um, it gives you some recommendations here. I click on the back button and go back to our list. Um, you'll see those tools on all of the different pages. You can look right here, even on our, our launch page, our home page for our immigration topic, you can see the listen button right there, so it'll read it to you. And then over here, if you want to cite something from this main page, there's your citation button or your option to save it to your Google Drive account. Okay. So that's pretty much how, how a database works. It's really that easy. Um, if you know how to use Google, it's not that hard to figure out how to use database. Databases work just like Google does. They just give you better and more focused information on your topic, okay? Um, I'm gonna click back over here to our library website. We're on that general resources page. Um, and before we wrap up the video, I just wanna show you um, a couple of other things. As I mentioned earlier, eLibrary is a general interest database which has all different uh, topics in it, but we also have subject specific pages um, and uh, databases. So if you take a look, we've got a whole bunch of different subject areas listed here on our library website. Let's say that you are doing resource research for um, a history class. You could click on our history resources page. It would take you to our history page. Um, and if you scroll down, you will see there's our link to eLibrary. It's the second one down, okay? Um, but also there's a link to the ProQuest History Research Library. So this is a specific um, database that only has history resources. 
in it, okay? So it works just like Google does, okay? Um, you gotta log in again, just like we did before, okay? Click on the login button, because mine is saved, okay? And then it works pretty much the same way, okay? Couple of little differences though. Um, these ProQuest subject specific databases are actually aimed at college students. Okay, so they're assuming that you have a big college library with a whole bunch of print articles and stuff like that on the shelves that you can go see. So in the ProQuest databases, they don't always give you the full text of the article in the database. In other words, you can't always get the full article right here on the computer. Okay. So since we don't have one of those big university libraries for you to go and get the print copy of the article, we wanna click right here under the search box where it says full text. We only want full text articles. We don't want articles um, that aren't included in the database. So like we don't want them to just give us the citation and not give us the full text of the article. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in immigration again, same topic. Um, got back a whole list of results, and you'll see this looks pretty similar to um, how eLibrary looked. It works exactly the same way. It has exactly the same tools. Um, you just have to find them. They're in a slightly different place, okay? So you can see over on the left side of the screen all of our different source types. Um, if you scroll down, you will see where you can um, limit by publication date, just like we did in eLibrary, okay? Um, if you click on one of the articles, you will see you have the same options over here in the upper right side where you can get your citation, you can email it to yourself. Um, if you click under all options, it gives you um, the option of saving it to your Google Drive, just like we did in eLibrary. So you got all the same tools here. You just have to maybe take a minute to find them. You've even got other related items and that sort of thing. Okay. So that is pretty much it. That's how a database works. Um, once you learn how to use one database and you play around with one database, you can take that knowledge and apply it to any other database that's out there. We have probably over 20 different databases. And if you explore our library website a little bit, you'll see all of them, all different subject areas, um, but they all work the same way. So that's why I don't need to walk you through every single one of them. The other reason it's good to practice this and learn it is because once you get to college, uh, your college professors are going to expect you to use databases and not use Google. Okay, so um, if you learn how to use databases in high school, you'll be able to take this knowledge and apply it to those college databases and that'll give you a head start on some of the other students. Now, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions, go back to that welcome page on our library website, scroll down, um, send me a chat. If it's during the school day, send me an email. If it's not, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Also, be sure to check with your teacher or with me, and we can give you a handout that breaks down step by step how to use all of our different databases and includes the logins and passwords for them. Okay. So you're going to want that handout um, if you're going to be using our databases. Yep. All right. I hope that was helpful to you and have a great day.